السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته What's going on the BBs? I'm Suraj Hashmi And I'm Mujahid Kobe And Jay is exceptionally late um, Yes I apologize I will quit my job tomorrow I promise you Absolutely, essentially 100% should it's it's taking time from chip posting, from listing, from you know making memes where I'm eating your ass. It's just it's no good. It's not sustainable. It it's isn't. Just not. It doesn't uh, work. Well, welcome to the list stream, Habibis. We're very glad that you're all here this evening. Um, thanks for for staying up late with us. Um, and if you're on the West Coast, then um, thank you for. Staying up late with us as you're all <laughs> it's only seven o'clock over here. It's not that uh, late. I, I I don't believe it, Jay. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Right. So, um uh, Jay, you want to hear something wild? Tell me. This is the first stream I'm doing on my new my new desktop, my new gaming PC. It's that is amazing because you yeah. went you went from a new new MacBook. Mm-hmm. It was shit. Then you went to a new gaming laptop. Mm-hmm. It was all right. And now look how crisp you are. Look how crisp you look compared yeah. to yet, like last week's stream. It's insane. It's like night and day. I mean, lighting's a little bit, but I think now that you have your your gaming PC you say the and a sucked. four and a four K, yeah, the lighting sucked in in your in your place in Florida. The lighting fucking sucked. Compared to I'm, not Florida, DC. Sorry, you're in oh, Florida DC, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DC, no, DC, 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 yeah, DC was terrible. <laughs> DC was absolutely terrible. You look fucking great now. Like you look great. The 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 lighting is great. The clarity is great. Now we just have to hope the the internet stays where it needs to be. Uh, it never will, but inshallah, we're hoping it will. <laughs> almost uh, there, Habibi. Almost. What, there. what did you get? You got that 3070 Ti, right? Think so. The one, the one I told you was was the the best the best bang for your buck. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was the thirty seventy Ti. Good. It's, I think you uh, got, basically you got whatever I had before. Uh, now we are definitely cooking. Oh hell yeah! Uh, like before, it's, it was just you, Matt, I could I couldn't even. I lo- I could probably cook a steak with the with the the fan I had before. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you can, now you probably can't hear anything coming out of your PC. Uh essentially 100% true for sure. So Hell yeah. Now we can now we can make promises of gaming and never game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's basically how it's supposed to go, right? Yeah, we got gaming computers, PS5s, everything is set up for us to be able to stream and game at the same time and we just haven't just been just doing it yet. And we just don't do it cuz that's our MO. I know we need to start doing it. Honestly, we should start doing it. We should start a revolution on Rumble. Game streaming on Rumble, the Habibi Bros start the revolution. I think like right now. That I think, I think that would I work. Think it should happen. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so uh we are coming live to you uh, on Rumble. Um, we're also on some other platforms as well. But uh if you really want to support me and Jay and our efforts to uh essentially one hundred percent own the libs um and basically own any anyone else who um needs to be owned go hit us up on our uh was it locals yeah it's locals yes it's, it's locals, locals. <laughs> it's locals. It's locals. <laughs> i always forget it uh I'll, you can use a promo code jerubin69 to get one month free trial on our locals and um we got some we got some you know premium content on there and uh mm-hmm. It's cool. It's cool. It's a cool scene. Um, Jay and I are uh, have gotten quite busy over the last month, so uh, Ramadan ended for me. And um, uh, for you, Jay, you are um, basically just terrorizing everyone on Twitter. That's what I'm trying to do to the best of my abilities. Luckily, I still haven't been banned yet off of ass looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now with Elon buying Twitter, it looks like I probably will stay on Twitter as ass looking for the rest of. Uh, we're just we're really honestly just hoping that uh, Jay's 14 other Twitter accounts come back. All at once. And they all oh. become self-aware. 
and just start dunking on me. Inshallah, inshallah. So, with that being said, Jay, let's get let's get to our list, okay? Let's let's mm-hmm. get to our top ten. Um, let's see it. Do you want me to share it? Should I share do you, it? Do you have it open? I I, I have do. It I have it. I have it. I have it open. Oh, I, I just thought go. I thought you wanted to share. I can't hear any of your music if you're trying to play it. Well, if I if I'm gonna play the music, then are I you, should. Are you gonna play some baby metal? Yeah. Uh, well, it depends. What what do the Habibis want to listen to? Because probably I can't not baby, play. Probably, probably can't, not baby metal. I won't be able to li- like play. As we will get immediately demonetized and taken down. Exactly. So let's see. I like that. That's that's a nice, right? nice little little little, little set the the mood of like Habibi Habibi yeah. Bros. Just everybody, close your eyes. Think of a nice desert evening. Me yeah. and Siraj getting, in getting in belly dance. By, yeah, getting in belly dance. Getting sixty nine by a camel. <laughs> I was gonna say me and me and Saraj in belly dance in our belly dance uniform, dancing together all mm-hmm. around while you guys sit on the nice cold desert floor mm-hmm. with your hookahs. Possibly getting fingered in the butthole by a cactus. Oh, that's definitely gonna happen. I mean, can't you just feel your butthole clenching <laughs> and getting better? I could feel it right now. Absolutely. You know, you, you, you have that get itch. It nice and you have that itch, and the, and the cactus has the scratch. So, ooh. Anyways, this is, this is a nice vibe to get into the list because this past week was just absolutely insane. If you, you have been tuning into anything and everything that was Twitter.com. Now, right. obviously, the list is confined to Twitter. Some people ask, should the list be you know applied to other uh, social media platforms? Usually, it doesn't because pretty much all of the discourse, as Jay and I have eloquently stated, it's, it's like you're suckling on the teat of new of the news feed, right? And that's what right. Twitter. That's what Twitter.com is. That's why we keep things focused on Twitter. So coming at number ten, now uh, for, we we kind of lightly touched on this in the last week's list, but we did touch about uh, upon it even more heavily if you watched last episode of BB Power Hour. Basically, Jay, Roe v. Wade hasn't officially been overturned, but the libs are acting like it is. Pro-abortion advocates are acting like it is because mm-hmm. a leak happened within the last a leak happened in the last week. Wow, I'm I'm rhyming now. Anyways, <laughs> basically, Samuel Alito, Justice Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito has a, an opinion. A draft of his opinion was leaked. We still don't know who the leaker was. Right. And basically was saying that Roe v. Wade will meet its likely inevitable end. Yeah. And states will then have the right to vote and legislate on what they, what abortion laws they want to put forward. So. Exactly. So it basically just takes off the uh, the federal the federal scope of abortion, right? And and making and making it like it is the uh, settled law of the land, right? So what's wild is that it, things got even more heated since we did our last show because now you have protesters not just doxing the Supreme Court justices, but actually going to their homes and picketing outside. Some people calling for just mass mass violence. Yeah. And then others calling to burn down their houses. And and people going to churches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people going to churches and basically trying to to like get confrontational and aggressive with with church going members and over abortion, man, it's, it, it is just insane. It's, it's really going to, to also get, turn people away uh, on from being on their side. I mean, you're not going to see a lot of conservative Latina Latinos 
fall no, in no, line no, oh, with Jay, their that's let, that's Latinks. Okay. Sorry, get it right. You're not gonna you're not gonna find a lot of conservative Latinks or a lot of conservative immigrants, for that matter, that are going to fall into the category of abortion with no limits. And a lot of these these advocates for abortion are even going further than that. They even they're even putting in where you can kill them after they've been born. It's just absolutely insane. The whole uh, conversation around it. And it's always the people who are really la- the loudest are like fat white guys with blue hair. Have yeah. you ever noticed that? Yeah, you they're can't all, they're all like that. what to do with their body. And yeah. it's like, what what are you? Well, what's, all, uh, what's also wild is like the people, the like the pro-abortion advocates who basically – you know, who are basically a bunch of ones and twos basically saying, we're not going to have sex with you. <laughs> we're not having sex with you. Oh, no. You want to get oh. some of this? You want to get some? They're like, lay it, like literally, you know, their BMI is at least 69. And nice. they're saying, we're not going to have, we're not putting out. We're not putting out. Now that Roe v. Wade is going to be overturned. We're not putting out. It's it's kind of like you and me threatening women that we won't we won't have sex with them. It's the same, right, and it's, it's also like pro, it's like promising. It's like you and me, Jay, promising women that we will give them more than three inches. Right, it's which just, is not going to happen. It's just like, not going to happen. That's that's not possible. It's not. It's, it's you're not going to see it. A Maggie Freetag. Maggie Freetag on uh, Rumble says, "This is the type of youth we are bringing into this world that would." rather be dead than alive this is a really sad thing for our country i think she's referring to the thumbnail that i posted <laughs> so I, it's oh, the woman the... at the it's the woman at the oh uh at the, the pro-abortion protest saying i had an abortion yeah i wish my mom had aborted me just amazing incredible absolutely fucking incredible the way that they 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 do this it's so insane and like how are you supposed to look at these people like they're like logical normal human beings that you're going to actually have a uh, constructive conversation with when they're up there already saying like, I should have been killed. Well, that that's, that saves it for me. Do it. I don't give a shit. It's one I lesson. Hold on. the I got to read, read this comment. Michael Loco says noted to Siraj Hashmi making fun of ones. <laughs> 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 uh that's too good no cal mass is my bmi is 69 got a problem i'm not threatening to withhold sex and i'm male <laughs> oh man <laughs> let's get into some of these tweets yes all right so this is a top 10 this has been compiled by the list turn ben morrissey who obviously should be fired uh, oh for sure it goes without saying if you really wanted to follow ben on twitter you can find him at ben morrissey 16 it's not because he's 16 years old it's because he's been he's fired at least 16 times a day Much so well. coming in at number 10 we have stephanie rule an msnbc host who tweets out for all the men who don't consider abortion rights an issue for them, ask if sex with women is a priority, which I have to say, Jay, that is, that might, might be the most sexist thing she's ever said. Well, also homophobic as well. That's true. It's very homophobic. <laughs> that is like, so homophobic. It's, uh, I mean, are you going to go and ask uh, a gay guy if the priority is sex with women? Look, it's insane. It is insane. Sex with women is not the priority right. of men. All right. It's not like we think about it 37,000 times uh, a second. And also, wait, look, wait, there's wait. also eating ass that wait, comes wait. before it. There is there is uh, sucking on toes. All right. There There is nibbling on the nipple. And there is the 69 hours it takes us to find the clitoris. These are the priorities <laughs> that we have as men. In comparison to just having sex with women. If if anything, if anything, sex with women is literally at most 10 seconds. The rest of the time is literally just trying to find it. Oh, for sure. And and for us, it's trying to find our dicks. But for other men, it's trying to find the clit. That's true. That's the the I don't even think it's real. See, that's the thing. Yeah. 
But I mean, Stephanie Rule, it's 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 wild, man. Wow. Absolutely wild. And I'm, just I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed. I think I think of all the MSNBC hosts over the last week. Uh, I think in 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 our top ten, Stephanie Rule <laughs> has the most outrageous take. Oh, I think I think which is surprising. Does. It's surprising for her. She's she's normally more or less even keel for an MSNBC host, of course. Right. Let me show let me show you what the priority of men is. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so terrified right now. What is he gonna do? What is it? Hold on. I'm oh I'm I'm bringing I'm, it up right now. I'm really so scared. scared. I'm really I'm terrified. <laughs> what what is that? <laughs> this is this is the priority of men. Just digging holes? Just digging a hole at the beach. <laughs> like you go to our beach randomly. This is this is what we do. This is what we think about. Did we dig deep enough? How deep can we dig this deep, hole? Can we dig How all deep? the way to the other side of the, the earth? <laughs> Right. And the funny thing is, is like, these are all men with one goal who don't know who each other are. They don't know who each other are. They just were randomly at the beach and they're like, hey, you want to dig a hole? Sure. <laughs> oh, that's our yeah, priority. Yeah, I love you. I love it. God, that's that's too good. Yes. I love it. Excellent. I love it. Let's get to number nine. This is uh, we all know this... Carl's priority is building Legos. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> you don't get, get in sex. here, Carl. <laughs> Carl. Don't make it fun of Carl today. It seems <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't get sex. All right, where uh, white Carl? All right, so number nine, we have Gab. It was surprisingly not the the website, uh, the social media site. Gav tweets out, never seen a pro-life motherfucker adopting kids, LOL, ever. <laughs> 37,000 retweets, 264,000 likes. This tweet is, uh, scroll down, Jay, scroll down, scroll down. This tweet has been deleted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she, she kept on getting uh, quote tweets and tweets and, and replies of people who have uh, adopted. And the funny thing is about this as well as adoption is – they make it so hard in this country, but it's there's such a long wait list on mm -hmm. adopting as well. Like there's constant adoptions happening. It's act it's actually insane how bad pro abortion advocates are in their arguments. Like for one, you know how you have this adoption argument. Scroll up just so the people who haven't read it can see. So like they think that people who are pro-life have never adopted before you know what they are also saying is that uh if a woman has to keep the baby then the man should be responsible for staying with the woman and raising that baby and they think like conservatives are against that and every conservative or any pro-life advocate i know says your terms are acceptable Oh, absolutely. Those are such acceptable terms when it comes to uh, having a, a baby or, or for a woman giving birth, uh, yeah. the, the male um, side of it has to be responsible for that life as well. It's not it's just the, falling it's on just, the woman. It's just incredible. And it's very incredible. But the thing is, what they don't like to, to talk about is like, well, the men have to be responsible. It's like, the laws here, especially if if they get divorced or if if they're they have a kid together and they're um you know they have a civil unity, the male there's a lot of responsibility that falls unity? on civil unity. Yeah, the, like a civil yeah civil union. civil like, union got, civil union whatever. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm from the I'm the from I'm from UAE. It, 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 you're lucky I didn't call it the cut of kitab. Katab <laughs> All right. <laughs> These motherfuckers watching know what I'm talking about. But but the the other aspect of it is is just don't have kids out of wetlock. <laughs> yeah. so like make sure that you get hold over responsible. What's it's, what's so wild, Jay? What's so wild is that every single time people demand others to uh either grow up and basically 
uh, ha- you know, like basically, ma- you know, man up, you know, sh- ha- actually take on some responsibilities, like actually be held accountable for your actions. People throw a fucking shit fit about uh, doing that. They they just oh. cannot. People just do not want to be held accountable for their actions, and they Thanks. think that like taking taking a woman's right to choose away at least in this instance the way that they're describing it is considered like the biggest uh pop out that's going away for some reason i don't know why it's just like the and it's not even like the the whole the debate about abortion is literally like these pro abortion advocates they make it sound like they want to just kill the baby Oh, and not only that, like they, they try to pretend when they're, when they're, the rhetoric has gone too far. They try to bring it back by saying, no, it's actually a very hard situation. And, and abortion is very hard to talk about. And abortion is a very serious thing and abortion. And then you have the dumb bitch on MSNBC just announcing like, well, I want to, uh, announcing that she wants to have sex with, with the, the leaker, uh, the leaker to, and have, uh, the, and, uh, then get pregnant the and then abort the baby. And they're all laughing about it and stuff. It's like, no, 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 but it's a serious matter and all this kind of stuff. All you have, you have other talk show hosts having a parade saying, yay, abortion and all that kind of stuff and really pushing it. And you have other advocates stating, I was proud to have my abortion uh, and stuff. It's like, look, there are people and there are the majority of people who do have abortion. Like, I I don't know if it's the majority, but there's a lot of people who have abortions that it's very hard, uh, hard for them. How do you think they feel when you talk about it being so easy like that? Yeah. How do you think I the mean, mothers? It's, it's nothing, and, nothing to celebrate. It's pretty. Right. Pretty and easy. the women who who were either forced to do it or who, who did it and made the really hard de- decision to do it and stuff. How do you think they feel when they're watching you parade the dead bodies and the dead babies around like that? That's like right. it's 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 a hard decision for a lot of people, but. They don't uh, give the, a fuck about them because in it, the moment, all that matters is the way that they think and the way that they want right. to push this. And, and it, it's not even about, yeah, it's not even about like this whole idea of freedom or or whatnot. Like they, they are trying to define when life begins. And I think it's very, I, I think, I think what, you 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 basically hit hit the nail on the head right there. It's like they truly just don't care anymore. It's not about the women's right to choose. They just, as you said, want to kill babies. Um, but let's get to number eight because it's 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 this is a little change of scenery here. Because if you don't recall, Dave Chappelle was attacked on stage this past week, right? And uh, calling all astronauts has this wild take. I actually don't know what calling all astronauts is. I imagine it's a band. But they tweeted, if Dave Chappelle didn't make offensive jokes about minorities, he wouldn't get attacked on stage. If his security have injured his attacker, they will face a lawsuit. Oh, Jay. It's, 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 it's like, it's, they're, tweeting like, they're tweeting like Dave Chappelle just became white, a white man. Oh, right. It's uh, he's he's a straight black man making fun of minorities. Oh, <laughs> oh my it's, god! Whoa. His vagina joke was hilarious, though. It's like I when he was talking one. about. Oh, it was so good when he was talking about how they they do the uh, the uh, what's it called the surgery. Uh, and how he was talking about how they're different vaginas. It, it's a, it's he's great. He's. The way he makes the jokes are great. Anyone who takes offense to uh, to them, honestly, they just should grow up. It is really fucking amazing to me how badly they want all of all the minorities to be out of pulp culture. What like the only people that can make fun of them are people within their own minority group. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. Why are you making treating them different than everybody else? Is it be is it because you think that they can't handle it? Do you think that they, they, they have a mental mental issue? Do you think they're weaker than other people? What is it you you are projecting onto them? It's uh, yeah, that's the so I, I don't think people really understand that liberal racism is just as bad, if not worse, than like the overt racism that you see 
like where you call where you see someone call someone else a, a, an ethnic or a racial slur because when liberal racism is allowed to persist it basically becomes policy and then it becomes it, then you would get implemented policy like you know these equity standards and and everyone's talking about equity because like for some reason jay People of other different racial, ethnic, and religious groups are not uh, get, are not given the same opportunities as white people, and therefore we have to basically bring everyone down and water it down. That's that's the type of racism that we're facing. Is that it's, it's not the bigotry of it's, low it's, expectations? It's, yeah, it's the bigotry of low expectations. It's assuming that people who didn't come from a life of means are not able to uh are, are not are not able to basically move upwards economically there's no upward that, economic mobility they, they're not they're also not able to be on the equal playing field as everybody else right they, they can't because because dave Ch Chappelle can't make fun of trans people but he can make fun of everybody else then trans people will th that they will not be able to be in that sphere they're mm -hmm. not going to be in that sphere the greatest way to answer that kind of stuff is go on tour with the uh, with dave Chappelle. i yeah. dare you to even go and try he would never even say no for them to yeah. go on tour with him to open to open up with him to go have talks with him to go on um to go on uh, Joe Rogan's show, to do all yeah. of these things, to be part of the same sphere, they, to go and be welcomed. They change the it. rules, man. They change the rules welcome. on everything. They change the rules on everything. It's so and, sad. And it doesn't stop people. That's what they have to understand. Like if you get trolled and, and it works and comedians like it and comedians huh. will, they'll continue to do it. I mean, it's not like he's trolling you. He's making these legitimate points and these legitimate jokes that you are, overreacting to and this overreaction is always wanting to get played more they're always want to gonna they're gonna want to keep on playing that overreaction as but soon if as you, you yeah it's just like it's just like with anything as soon as you find as soon as like you expose your weak spot to something like if it's in this case like comedy uh if you react in a certain way specifically negatively that basically just tells a comedian to keep making fun of you in that regard, because if it pisses you off that much, then there's something that it, you're exposing an insecurity about yourself that you don't think should be exposed. I think, you know, either I take the South Park approach with, with respect to comedy. It's either all OK to make fun of or none of it is. Right. Yeah. Michael Loco, thank you so much for the super chat. Says liberals don't see conservative uh, blacks as authentically black. Biden literally said so. Yes. There is a saying says all uh skin folk all skin folk ain't all kin folk, which is basically another way of saying uh the whole Biden, you ain't black. Like I've actually they talked are... to people, I've, I've talked to people who basically have said that like there is so, uh, well, Nicole Hannah Jones has said it specifically. Like, uh, there is such a thing as being racially black and politically black. And, uh, but by the way, that's not a real thing. There's no such thing as like being uh, politically white and, and racially white. There's no such thing as being uh, politically Muslim and uh, religiously Muslim. There's no such thing as, I mean, they're literally making up words. Right? Well, well, what she means is if you're politically black, that means you're voting for your white master Dems to make sure that they are, you know, paying you for uh, your welfare, paying for your, uh, you know, your your children's uh, food stamps and paying for all this type of stuff to make sure you can't get anywhere else in life. The The way that they speak to me is is very sick, like to be politically white. What does that mean? It means that you're you're wanting to vote for policies that are going to be specifically good for white people. So if you're politically black, 
like she is stating that she is, that means she's a mm -hmm. black supremacist. That means she wants policies that are going to only affect black people in a positive light. Not everybody, not all other minorities, not other races, not anything. If you're politically black or politically white or politically anything of your race, that means you're a racist piece of shit and you're a racist, race supremacist. Yeah. So when she's yeah. stating these things and they use this language so they can state any of these Republicans, any of these other, other people who do not follow or fall in line with them are racist or right. white supremacists. They're, they're, they're pushing for white politics. You're, you're a Brown man pushing for white politics. You are, are a uh, Asian pushing for white politics. So you're, you're a white supremacist. It's how they're able to, you know, um, uh, turn themselves into a pretzel. <laughs> Speaking of pretzels, what's up, Sarah? How are we doing? <laughs> Miss Pretzels here. Um, Frostbite says, when did this turn into an episode of HPH? HPH, Tao Bender says, that Frostbite says, Habibi Power Hour. It is not Habibi Power Hour, it's just the list stream. But, you know, we try to talk about this stuff because, you know, we don't get a chance to say everything that's on our mind during right. uh, Habibi Power Hour. So, Jay, let's get to number seven. Let's do it. So, number seven comes from the New York Times. Oh, and God. look how salty... Look how salty the New York Times is when they write this. They write, uh, Elon Musk grew up in elite white communities in South Africa, detached from apartheid's atrocities and surrounded by anti-black propaganda. He sees his takeover of Twitter as a free speech win, but in his youth did not suffer the effects of misinformation. Can you scroll this down? Is, Let's look at that. Have, Let's look at ratio. Amazing. Look at that. It's, it's Jay, amazing. It's, it is amazing because they're literally blaming Elon Musk for apartheid happening when he was literally a kid. Well, not only <laughs> not only that, are they saying that during the apartheid, it was all free speech and, and information that was uh, being being uh, put in, but in his youth did not suffer the effects of misinformation? What? What? They were Jay, did, fully did, in... What did we did, Jay? Did you and I suffer the effects of misinformation? What the fuck does that even mean? They're they're so stupid. They're so fucking stupid. The whole thing about the apartheid that was put into place was based on misinformation and pushed what do about you mean? propaganda. Anti-black propaganda is all misinformation. How are oh, they no, saying I agree. he did not I agree. suffer from misinformation? He, yeah, he like, seeks yeah. to take over, but in his youth did not suffer the effects of misinformation. Yes. He fucking did. And in the same article, it states how much he did as well. When he was the, uh, his family were anti-apartheid. His, yeah. uh, his parents he, he were was, very anti-apartheid. He was sticking up for a friend that was black and he got in trouble for it. And he left South Africa early so he wouldn't be forced into the military. That's right. He did. He did leave South Africa early to, to avoid the military. This is uh, absolute horseshit. How this is considered journalism is just the reason why we are justify we are justified in hating the shit out of this these fucking organizations. It's we absolutely amazing. Jay. It's absolutely amazing that the New York Times continues to exist the way it, it has. Like they are like it's almost because you, you've noticed that like CNN has gone through a massive change over the last like few months because Jeff Zucker was ousted and they brought in Chris Light. And mm -hmm. I think we saw today, we'll probably talk about it on Wednesday, this like change in tone from like Dick Face Dale talking about uh, Biden, yeah. like living in a, in a bizarre world, alternate reality. And actually, like this, it's like, a, yeah, and actually fact checking him and basically talking about him in a way that like he would normally talk about Trump. So, yeah. it, like, I feel like the New York Times is like right for the picking in terms of like them having a complete overhaul in whoever runs them because they are so, so dishonest and just woke, like, like NPR level woke, but also they, I mean, the fact that they are considered like the paper of record still continues to astonish me because there's no way they should be trusted with anything anymore. No, it's very hard. It's very hard to see these places that have been wrong on a lot of things that have their, their standards have been reduced so low. 
And they still come out with these fucking stupid statements stating like Taylor Renz is part of our standards and at Washington yeah. Post or this. We stand behind this reporting that had so many different fucking uh, errors in it. Instead of coming out and saying we get we got these things wrong, they stealth edit shit. And then mm-hmm. they try to they try to say you're you're crazy. They try to point it point out they gaslight you to a point where when they gaslight so hard and lie so much that when you call them out to it, they call you crazy and they yeah. call themselves the victim. Yeah. Like that's how manipulative it is. It's so fucking sick. Black Milk on Rumble says even their own article counters their headline. It's like the editor that made the headline didn't read the article. Just it's beautiful. Absolutely it's, beautiful. It's astounding. All right. So let's try to get to the next one because this is, we're getting right back to the abortion debate. Motherboard yes. at number six comes in. It says, uh, tweets out, misoprostol is relatively easy to acquire uh, from veterinary sources. <laughs> since- <laughs> Since in addition to medically inducing abortions, it's also used to treat ulcers in horses. <laughs> so, uh, Jay, so I guess oh, horse medicine is cool now. And not only that, they're saying to go directly to a veterinarian and get it. Not even ask your doctor. Like you were able to get ivermectin from a fucking doctor. Over here, they're saying go. This is where you can go and get like, like for like the pill is not nine ninety nine at fucking Walmart, for instance, yeah. or or they don't have they don't have the Plan, plan B pill um, readily available for fucking everybody over the fucking counter. Not only that, you can go to Planned Parenthood and ask them for the pill, and they'll give it to you for fucking free. Just incredible. What the fuck is what are we doing uh, here? What is wrong with these people? Dude, what the can fuck someone, is wrong can someone, with these people? Can, can, has some, I'm, I'm sure Joe Rogan has someone has shared this with Joe Rogan like a million times, but like every had single, to literally SNL did a sketch on it making fun of Joe Rogan about him taking ivermectin, and they have fucking Pete Davidson playing Joe Rogan retarded basic no, yeah no funny. like it wasn't even funny like it's not like that it, it just wasn't funny and they were just trying no. to make fun of him for taking ivermectin dude the, the fix is it man it's been it so let's let's get uh, to the top five real quick uh, i dare them to make uh make a joke of a of a mother going into a veterinary uh place and asking for for this uh misoprostol Miso Pro Stall. Miso Soup. Miso Honey. Miso Honey. Five dollars. Miso Honey. Stop it. You're buying me a tailor. Yeah. Alex Falcone comes in at number five. You scroll down and says, this is a change of tone for me on here. But I don't think anybody actually believes fetuses are people. I think they're lying. There are almost one million miscarriages each year in America. It happens to almost everybody. But we're not constantly getting invited to the funerals. And then this is, scroll down. No, the whole the whole thread. The whole thread is wild. And then he and then he says, nobody who says abortion is murder is out carrying signs that say, and miscarriages are suicide. <laughs> what the, what? It doesn't even oh, make any sense. It's like saying somebody who died of cancer uh, committed suicide. That's exactly the same. The same. Uh, yeah, because the cancer because the cancer was part of their body, so they can't. The cancer basically acted out the will of the person, right? Oh so, uh, so he he went and killed himself, and, but the like, cancer yeah. actually killed him. An asthma attack, it was actually an asthma suicide. And also, this thing here, we're almost like a million miscarriage each year in America. It happens, and we're not invited to funerals. Do you know how devastating it is for mothers, for women? I'm sorry, uh, birthing persons, person persons who want. Children, persons who want to give birth, persons, birthing persons, people who 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 birth, birthing people, people. Birth. yeah, people who birth. All right, so like people who birth. I mean, it is the most devastating, hard, especially for for women who try to have children, Jay, it's, Jay, it's, Jay, or, Jay. or who've had them for like four or five months and then unfortunately had to 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 suffer a miscarriage. It is the the worst feeling and a lot of mothers don't and women birthing birthing people birthing persons people who who birth people who birth birth people uh so we have a last minute addition to the list um 
we'll get to it in a sec, but I, I'm, I'm going to, I want your thoughts on this. Let's get to number four. Eric Swalwell, he actually has two offenses. First one <laughs> says, would, would anyone be shocked if Republicans went after women's rights to vote next? I would. <laughs> <laughs> man i dude eric fang fang yeah. fang fang would like uh to vote for eric swalwell twice right oh for sure fang fang would love to do it twice i i, I so he also has a second uh offense let's read it it says the Republicans won't stop with banning abortion. They want to ban interracial marriage. Do you want to say that? Well, then you should probably vote. <laughs> Where is this coming from? They are literally, they're, bro, they're actually trying to make it seem like we're living in the handmaid's tale. It's they're amazing. Not, it's not like, it's not. Alito, Alito's opinion is not like a federal ban on all abortion. It is literally saying the federal government is taking a step away from this issue and letting right. it go to the states. How is right. that? How, how is it's that? Because they can't, they can't comprehend that abortion is not a right. It's not a human right. Right. Oh, yeah. And they are saying that that, that's that's actually that's actually the impetus for all this, because, yeah, they basically so they start off with saying abortion is health care. And then they went on to say that health care is a right. So they're literally making that logical leap from then saying to abortion is a human right. That's that's the leap. That's the leap. Yes. And that's what they that's what they're trying to to put across. So they're saying that abortion is a human right. Uh, for women or birthing people or people who give birth or whatever the fuck they want to try and call them um, so they don't offend uh, other people. It's just so fucking retarded. But um, yeah, so that's why they're saying that you're taking rights away from women because it's a human right to give an abortion yeah, or to get an abortion. It's your human right to get an abortion. Let's get to number three. We got Steve Cox. Steve Cox, who's responding to federal felon mouse, saying back at the at cabinet's house, bans, hashtag bans off our bodies. And Steve Cox tweets out, when he moves his family to a hotel, empty his house and burn his shit in front of the hotel. These people are psychotic, Jay. They're sick. They're sick. And, and, Mind you, these are the same people who, who Pearl crashed over January 6th, but now it's justified. Now violence and, and uh, breaking into shit and burning shit down is justified, just like in 2020. It's going to be the same play, and it's you're going to see that. It's an insurrection all over again from, today. from the media. No, Jan it's, not gonna, it's not going to be ins- insurrection. It's going to be 2020 summer of fucking uh, riots and burn downs, and they're going to justify it. Not only are they going to justify it, you're going to have dumb fuck celebrities like uh, Kristen Changin or whatever the fuck her name is, bail out rapists and bail out murderers like she did in 2020. And they're, and you're going to have Kamala Harris do the same thing. And it's going to be just the biggest, the biggest display of hypocrites, the biggest display of absolute pieces of shit. That's yeah. what we're going to see. Well, and just in getting- time for summer. Yeah, we're getting getting close to number one here. We have Caroline Riley, who apparently is a reporter at Rewired. Caroline Riley coming in at number two, responding to the New York Times article. Can you scroll down just a little bit so we can read the uh, New York Times tweet? It says, the headquarters of an anti-abortion group in Madison, Wisconsin, was set on fire Sunday morning in an act of vandalism that included the attempted use of a Molotov cocktail and graffiti that read... Uh, well, the, I, I know the full quote is like, if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. Right. And so Caroline Riley quote tweeted that saying, more of this, may these people never know a moment of peace or safety until they rot in the ground. This is a reporter, Jay, reporter. So so, so scroll down, scroll down, what happened to that? Maybe maybe next she'll get a job at uh, Planned Parenthood. Uh, so yeah, she probably will, like Kate Smith. Ah, that tweet's she been deleted. deleted. And what, what happened to her afterwards? She deleted her entire fucking account. Oh, did she really? Nice. I think so. Let's let let's let's check. I'm just gonna verify. Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> it's completely gone. Yeah, click on it. You could you could actually click on her Twitter Twitter handle. Oh, yeah. this account doesn't like exist. Uh, <laughs> Habibis, the list works. The list it absolutely works. works. It works, Habibis. Yeah, welcome to all the latecomers who are just tuning in. It's the top ten yeah, list of come. people who need their phones taken away. Uh, we have gone uh, ten through two. We're gonna get into the uh, the. Honorable, honorable mentions real mentions. quick and then get to the worst tweet of the week so we've actually had a, bit, a little bit of an audible so things are going to change up so by the end of this uh by the end of the stream we are going to get to um our we might have a revised list so let's let's go ahead and check out those top honorable mentions so the very first one we have Midas touch Midas Touch tweets out, breaking, video has leaked, which purportedly shows Madison Cawthorn having sex with what appears to be his male cousin. Cawthorn thrusts his penis into his cousin's face while naked in bed together, making loud moaning noises. We will not be posting the clip at this time. <laughs> can, can you scroll down? Oh, this tweet's been deleted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hakira. Hakira says, uh, Pakistani accent time. Okay, we read the, the last few in the uh Pakistani accent jo Jason Chaffetz he beats out uh it is and before the oh you so you support J6 LMA trolls show up the defense is substantive when the mob is right some but not all more aggressive tactics are justified they're not not I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about What's he he's about? he's talking about that uh when you're when you're cheering on these protests and riots you're justified compared to the people who are cheering on Jan 6 because uh, that's right. you in your own opinion are more justified like you are o- in your own opinion are more justified this is not it's not like we're putting women in camps it's not like we're going to go and shoot them with one bullet put them in a mm-hmm. line and shoot six with one bullet i think we could get through eight though but they're making it out like that's what's going to happen. And honestly, it's not. All that's going to happen is that after this happens, we're going to strip their, their rights away. They're not going to be allowed to drive. They cannot vote, own property, and they'll make us sandwiches every fucking day. Women, you are fucking screwed, and I love it. Inshallah. All right, here we go. Let's get Nira. to uh, Nayara Huck. Nayara. I actually, uh, I actually know her. Um, <laughs> but was, this was a while. This was... Uh, Nayar Huck tweets out, please know this draft opinion is harsher than Sharia law, Roe v. Wade. Now, just, just FYI. And the, dra- the draft again, opinion doesn't put any laws into place. There's no law in place. <laughs> no law. It's None. just so good. These people are so fucking dumb. They're so, like, they show themselves every fucking time they tweet like this, that how fucking stupid they are when it comes to knowing anything whatsoever anything whatsoever and also nira just for your fucking uh like just to humor you a little bit more go read on what sharia limits when it comes to abortion and find out for yourself just go read it please go read it go read what saudi arabia uh limits and what uh, iran limits and there you go all right let's get to our number one worst tweet of the week fucking dumb we have simon gwynn simon gwynn tweeting out Mm -hmm. interest and i don't know who got this screenshot in light mode it's it's our fucking it's our fucking uh listern and he also got it in like the worst quality ever like the quality is shit absolutely insane anyways Simon Gwynn tweets out interesting real life trolley problem in America now. If he had the chance to kill Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, the two oldest right wing Supreme Court judges, should you do it while Biden can get his nominees to replace them confirmed? It's an interesting abstract question, but becomes a real conundrum if, say, you're terminally ill and have little to lose yourself, but know that it could save many women's lives in the future. What the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> hold on but hold on jay that so we have this Wait, let's, let's 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 unpack this for just a moment here don't yeah. don't go down don't scroll down because no, we do have yet. we have another we have a, we have a last minute audible here okay i'm gonna oh, tell for, you about that, it just a moment that's okay, okay? that's that's all right for number because one, this, this this is fairly recent okay so simon right. gwynn tweets this out basically saying all right let's just have this hypothetical about killing off clarence thomas and samuel Alito. He says this shit out openly with the Ukrainian flag in his Twitter name. Uh, amazing. 
it's it's it's, it's just the level of irony in this is absolutely stunning this guy hates the the authoritarian you know dictatorship of vladimir putin but then goes along to say actually you know what authoritarianism ain't so bad sometimes it's just so fucking it's just amazing the way that they will because of how righteous they make themselves feel they think these calls to violence or these uh calling to kill the the justices are confirmed and honestly they do wish that they were killed they do they want them dead it, it, they it, really it, want them dead it's like not you want to talk but... about <laughs> it's, it's, it's so <laughs> yeah, they really do no, they do. Like, if you had any any one of them break into the Supreme Court and able to get in there, they are going to make those guys' lives a living hell. And I swear to God, if there was an insurrection, if Antifa, Jay, if, if they Antifa stormed, got in yeah, there, it, yeah, if they if there was a storming of the Supreme Court and they actually like got in there and harmed Supreme Court justices, you know, you know, the left would be heralding them as as heroes. Oh, 100%, for sure, 100%. martyrs. They they would they would be Palestinians when when uh, when some terrorist goes and kills the Jews they're gonna be out there with with treats giving everyone baklava and shit that's how they that's how they'll celebrate it it's fucking yeah. ridiculous all right but we have another option this is a late a last minute option Ooh, this is Lori. this is our number one I I think Jay I think this should be our number one we're gonna call Lori. a late, last minute audible here. And basically bump everything off, everything down. Everything's going to be going from like oh, everything you is. saw before. Everything you saw before. <laughs> consider that one below, you know, one above that. Okay, so like what our original number one is now number two. So everything here is falls under this. Okay, Lori right. Lightfoot, the mayor of Chicago, Mary Lori Lightfoot, tweets this out this evening, literally like about an At hour. Well, hold on. Actually, I'd say the screenshot is from. Uh, what's his name's uh, time zone uh, from Ben because he's in he's in Central Time. So yeah. he actually got this for this is actually a tweet that came out four minutes before we went live. Lori Lightfoot tweets out to my friends in the LGBTQ plus community: the Supreme Court is coming for us next. The moment has to be a call to arms. Jay, this is literally J six all over again. This is nine oh, eleven times J six. Is- this is this is if this is calling for violence this is calling for uh a, a call to arms like you had barely this type of rhetoric coming out of Trump and they were like oh he he wanted them to go and kill everybody in the in the fucking uh who are voting in the house like they 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 pushed it so far now over here they're going to be like oh no all she's saying is that we need to go vote and blah 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 and yeah. she's going, we just need to go vote to... we need a, we, our arms our arms are our call yeah. to arms to pull to arms the to, to, to pull the to pull the voting machine that's that's that is the call to arms right there you're going to watch <laughs> him justify this watch him watch yeah, the left let's go this Jay, and, SCO, SCO, this is literally the ss coming for lgbtq plus people Absolutely. And what needs to happen, and I really hope, Peter, if you're listening, I'm pretty sure you're listening because I, you love how I call you Peter du- Douchey. So, Peter Douchey, you need to ask, and, and this needs to be the first question you ask the new press, uh, White House Douchey. press secretary. Yes, this is the first question you ask the new White House press secretary. Does Green the junk, president... Yeah. Doesn't does the president agree with Lori Lightfoot that you need that the gays and LGBTQ need to <laughs> get up in arms and fight the Supreme Court? They yeah. need to ask literally these declaring war on to. the Supreme Court. They have to ask these questions. It's amazing. And I and I know there's a lot of people asking about Steve Schmidt's meltdown. That that uh that whole meltdown oh yeah yeah so steve That's... schmidt of the lincoln project yeah, what, yeah what, he... i haven't actually he blocked me so i haven't actually been following it but oh, it sounds man, like something insane. it sounds like something that i mean like he generally needs his phone taken away yeah and after also, this just because he he's really also does. a piece of just because he's also a piece of shit right but it's one of those things where you're like all right man just keep tweeting keep he tweeting was... He was tweeting for 48 hours nonstop, and he's still tweeting now. Didn't even uh, take a especially, break. 
No, because right now um, the NYT, uh, New York Times. <laughs> the New York Times reported on it, and now he's doing a whole list, a whole fucking stream of tweets on the reporter about what's wrong with this, with with the the article and stuff, and like uh, he's like <laughs> he's like Peter, your headline is misleading. I lied after the fact by not quitting. What, <laughs> bro? It's so and bad. The Damon, it's da- so bad. that Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Lib, uh, Brooklyn Lib Mayo dad, Damon Paul says so Steve Schmidt has been fighting with Sherry Jacobus tonight. It's outstanding. Holy shit! So I have been blocked everywhere. by both of them. I have been blocked by both of them, and I, I'm definitely going to log into one of the alts. Try to figure you that gotta, out. You got to, you got to see what's going on. And then so, also, like how he was talking, talking about breaking up with, uh, with, Mc, with, uh, Megan McCain. McCain. Yeah, Is that, Megan oh McCain, my God. Yeah. So fucking the ridiculous. Guy is it's absolutely, insane. uh, unhinged. Overbearing urge says you could say that he threw a Schmidt fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Oh, so, God. Um, uh steve announced he was blocking her i don't know who blocked who before it's it's just it does at this point it doesn't even matter but there you go there you have it there's the list for this week you have it right there Lori lightfoot getting the number one spot with basically a call to arm by by basically declaring a call to arms for the lgbtq plus community against the supreme court if you could believe it so amazing keep it locked here obviously all the if I don't really care if you support us, but if you go in the description of this video, at least throw uh, a couple bucks towards Stacy's way. We got her, uh, we got her GoFundMe in the in the description below um, for her to get a heart transplant, and uh, she's a loyal Habib teacher. She's been a day one Habib tea, yeah. and um, basically she has uh, been going through it. She her spirits surprisingly up in, in such adversity but and and uh, she's a mother who's adopted two she's children. adopted two kids yes jay she's adopted two children two children uh-huh. it's yeah while she and as she's on the uh the wait list for a new heart uh and everything i mean these things these things happen and but she was still you know trying to do the right thing uh yeah. with with those two kids so yeah anything you can do even just go check it out retweet even it. sharing it sharing it with yeah. family friends even posting on social media that's even enough we just you know we want her to stay with us so um so anyways jay thank you so much for a lovely stream tonight uh it was wonderful happy to be as always we will be back on wednesday night for an all new habibi power hour 9 p.m east 6 p.m pacific on rumble and we will see you then. Peace, Masadama. Masadama, happy peace.